Hello and very welcome to my channel and today we are going to start our new topic that is of electrical machines of dedicated freight corridor corporation of India limited of executive electrical force. So previously we had solved all the papers uh, of the circuit analysis and also we have gone through the measurement portion of that freight corridor exam paper. So today we are going to start the machine portion now. So now I'm going to solve one by one question and write the question in the this board so that it will be easier for you to understand what the question scheme and what will be the solution of each problem. So I'm going for the number one question which came in the machine part that is uh, T F C C I L uh, for the post of executive electrical. And now I'll be going to solve today in this class that is uh, regarding the machines or we can also say electrical machines. So now we're taking the number one questions which came in the examination. So we are going to start with the first question that is a transformer. A transformer has 400 watt, has 400 watt as iron loss, as iron loss at full load, at full load. So what is the next part of the question? The iron loss at full load will be the iron loss at full load will be so there are uh, four options given number one is uh, 400 watt number two is given as uh, 800 watt number three is given as 100 watt and number four, the option number B is given as 200 watt. So it is given the question that a transformer has 400 watt as iron loss at full load. And so the iron loss at full load will be. So we know as the uh, transformer iron loss at full load is given. So iron loss at full load will remain same. It will not change. So it will remain constant 400 watt. So 400 watt will be the correct answer. So now I approach to as a question number two. Question number two is given a two pole alternator, a two pole alternator is running at 1500 RPM, is running at 1500 RPM. So its angular velocity will be, its angular velocity will be so there are four options given number a is 192 that is radian per second number b is given 157 radian per second number c option is given as 212 radian per second and option number D is given 118 radian per second. So it's given in the data that is a two pole. So we can see P is equal to two and the speed is given as one half five zero zero RPM. So what we have to find here, we have to find the angular velocity. So what is the angular velocity? Angular velocity is taken as omega is equal to 2 into pi into f. So we have to find the frequency here. We know f is equal to Pn by 120. As we know that n is equal to 120 f by p. We used to find the sp uh, speed, synchronous speed at this uh, from this equation. So we can write f is equal to Pn by 120. So what is P here? Uh, number of poles is 2 and speed is given as 1500 divided by 120. 
So if we solve this equation, this 6, we divide with 3, that is 2, and uh, that is 50, and so we cut this value, so it will be 25 hertz. So now we just put the values here, omega into 2, pi is 3.14 into 25, that is 2 into 550 into 3.14, if we calculate is 157 radian per second. So B will be the correct answer. I hope you have understood how I have calculated the angular frequency, omega is equal to 2 pi f, we know n is equal to 120 by p, so f is equal to pn by 120, we put the value of pole and speed and we get the frequency as 25 hertz and now we put this value 2 into 3.14, there is a pi into 25, that is 50 into 3.14 is 157 radian per second. I hope uh, this question answer is uh, very clear to you. Now we approach towards the next question, there is a question number 3. Uh, okay, before that I am going to erase the uh, first two questions. Okay, so now I go forward to the number 3 question that is in a split ring, in a split phase induction motor in a split phase induction motor in a split phase induction motor the two starter winding the two starter winding so four options are given over here number a option have equal r by xn ratio have equal r by xn ratio and number b option given draw only in phase draw only in phase draw only in phase currents number c option is given are mutually displaced by 90 degree are mutually displaced by 90 degree electrically electrically and number D option is given draw equal currents draw equal currents so in this question I think is clear to you that is a split phase induction motor the two stator winding so what are the stator winding there are two windings there is one the rotor winding which revolves and one is the stator which is stationary so in this case, the option will be the two stator winding are mutually displaced by 90 degrees. So electrically 90 degrees, so that it, there will be smooth operation or rotation of an induction motor. So now I go to the option number four. It's a theoretical question. Uh, there's nothing to explain much about here. Going to the option number four. That is uh, core lamination in a transformer. Core lamination. Core lamination in a transformer decreases. So, what the core lamination of a transformer decreases? Number A, that is uh, AD current loss. Number B is uh, hysteresis loss. Number C is given as copper loss and number D is given as leakage reactance. So uh, I hope you understand what is given the core lamination of a transformer. Why the transformer is giving the core laminations? 
so cold lamination of the transformer is done to reduce the eddy current loss so to reduce the eddy current loss the cold laminations of the transformer is done so if the cold lamination is done in the transformer this will ultimately decrease the eddy current loss so now i go to the number fifth question a three phase motor is running at 4% sleep a three phase motor is running at 4% slip if the input to the motor if the if the input to the motor if the input to the motor is 1000 watt so the electrical input will be 1000 watt then the mechanical power developed in the motor will be then the mechanical power the mechanical power developed in the motor will be so there are the four options given that is uh, 960 uh, watt option b is given as 96 watt option c is given as 9600 watt and option d is given by 0.96 watt so what you have to find out in a three phase motor is running at 4% slip if the input to the motor is 100 watt then what is the mechanical power so the electrical input that is the uh, electrical input that is a input power or electrical input is given as 1000 watt and slip is given as 4% so we can write here that is 4 by 100 that is 0.04 this is the slip so we have to calculate the mechanical power so mechanical power pm will be divided as 1 minus is or 1 minus slip into input power or electrical power so we have to just calculate 1 minus 0.04 into 1000 that is 0.96 into 1000 so if we calculate uh, 0.96 into 1000 it is 960 watt so uh, option a is the correct answer so i hope it is clear how i calculated the mechanical power so electrical input is given as 1000 watts slip is 4% that 4 by 100 0.04 mechanical power formula is uh, 1 minus slip into electrical power input that is 1 minus 0.04 into 1000 that is 0.96 into 1000 that is 960 watt so i uh, go forward with the next question which came in the examination that is question number 6 i'm going to wrap this above questions so the question number 6 uh, they are asking the armature of a dc machine the armature the armature of a dc machine the armature of a dc machine is placed on the rotor is placed on the rotor so two so there are four options given number option a to reduce losses reduce losses number b option save iron option c is support commutation and option d is given as that is decrease armature reaction decrease armature 
reaction. So now you can see the armature of a DC machine is placed on the rotor. So what it does, why it is placed, only the option will be correct that is support the commutation. So, so to support commutation, the armature of a DC machine is kept on the rotor. I hope this is uh, clear, it was a theoretical question. Now I go to the option of question number 7. A washing machine generally employs a washing machine generally employs a washing machine generally employs a so there is a four option given that is shaded pole the option B that is reluctance split face sorry it is a resistance split face resistance split face and option C that is single phase series single phase series and option D is given that is hysteresis so what is the main principle that is used in the for the washing machine so if this type of question comes so the option B that is the resistance speed phase will be the correct answer for the washing machine so it's nothing to explain is a theoretical question so now I go to the option question number 8 a uh, open circuit test on a transformer uh, and open circuit test on a transformer in circuit test on a transformer gives so why the open circuit test is done in the transformer so this is the question so it will be the option that is the uh, friction losses option B is given as iron loss option C is given as total loss and option D is given as copper loss so uh, we know why we do the open circuit test open circuit test on the transformer is only done to determine the iron loss so if we want to ch uh, check or determine the iron loss we do the open circuit test on the transformer so I hope it is clear to you now I go to the question number 9 question number 9 is asking in a 6 pole DC machine in a 6 pole DC machine in a 6 pole DC machine 90 mechanical degree 90 mechanical degree corresponds to how many electrical degrees corresponds to how many electrical degree so there are four options given over here that is 270 option B is 180 option C is 90 degree and option D is given as 47 degree so uh, we have got in the question that pole is equal to 6 and uh, mechanical degree mechanical degree is uh, given is 90 degree so how we can calculate they are asking electrical degree so electrical degree will be nothing but number of poles into mechanical degree divided by 2 so we just put the values number of pole is 6 into mechanical degree is 90 divided by 2 
this we do here 3, 3 into uh, 90 that is 270 degree. So 270 degree is the correct answer. So I hope you have understood how I have calculated the electrical degree from mechanical degree. Electrical degree is equal to number of poles by 2 into mechanical degree. We put the value of number of poles 6 pole. 6 into 90 divided by 2 that is 270 is the correct answer. So it's very easy how to solve the electrical degree. Now I go forward to the question number 10. So now uh, question number 10 is asking, that is question number 10, that is a this uh, dash motor runs at the highest speed at the highest speed when the load is removed when the load is removed so what will be the four options given that is uh, cumulatively compound cumulatively compound option b is given as a shunt shunt motor option c is given as a series motor and option B is given as differentially compound motor differentially compound motor so in this case uh, you know when the motor uh, runs at a very high speed when the load is removed answer will be series motor so as a series motor has got the high starting torque so the series motor takes more current at the time of starting. So there has to be always a load required to start a series motor. So if the load is not given, then the speed of the motor will be very high and this will burn out the armature. So it is always recommended to run the series motor with, a, uh, with any load because the starting current is very high. So I hope it is clear to you why uh, the load is used in case of series motor. So now uh, we go to the question number 11, the magnetic flask path the magnetic flux path in a transformer must have, in a transformer must have so the options are given that is high resistance so number two is given that is high reluctance option c is given as low resistance Option D is given as low reluctance. So in this case, when they are asking that the magnetic flux path in a transform must have. So it is a theoretical question, the answer will be low reluctance. So in the case of low reluctance only, uh, this should be there in the case of transformer for the magnetic flux path. So I hope uh, this question answer is uh, clear to you now. Now I am going to the question number 12. That is leakage flux in a transformer. Leakage flux in a transformer So there is a blank given so there will be the options so I am getting the answers here that is help in the transfer of energy help in the transfer of energy a 
option B is given produces mutually induced EMF produces mutually induced EMF option C is given is minimized by interleaving is minimized by interleaving the primary and secondary winding interleaving the primary and secondary winding and option D is given is negligible at full load is negligible at full load so now in this case if they are asking that is a leakage flux in a transformer so uh, only if this type of question come in the exam the answer will be is minimized by interleaving the primary and secondary winding so in this case uh, the by interleaving the primary and secondary winding the leakage flux in the transformer can be minimized so i hope uh, this question uh, is also very easy for you now and uh, so there are another uh, 12 questions left uh, for the electrical machines first to be completed for the freight corridor so i hope you like my videos and we'll be continuing the rest part of the numericals and the questions of machines in our next video thank you very much